The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. Rejoice and be glad. 
my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree his body
I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords to me. I have decided 
no turning back I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. hands to heaven. It's so wonderful, Lord. To you be all the glory, all the praise and the honor. For without you we can do nothing. Thank you for what you did 2,000 years ago for us. When you paid the price on Calvary's cross. That we could go free. But that was not enough for you because you told us that you would not leave us comfortless. And so you sent the Holy Ghost. And thank you so much for sending another comforter who can help us and guide us in all truth. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came. And thank you for being with us and in us and operating through us. We rely upon you today Give us the tongue of a pen of a ready writer that we might speak your word unto your people, we pray. That between now and the conclusion of the service, that the hand and the purpose and the plan of God would be made manifest among us. That every single person in this room will be touched. People today will be saved, healed, set free, delivered, the power of the enemy broken, marriages healed, and whatever is needed in Jesus' name. And then those that are watching in their homes, that you wrap your arms around them. I pray that the good shepherd walks up and down through these aisles and Lord, show you people how much you love them today. Just love them, Lord, like you do, but give them a tangible hug where they go. I think the Lord wrapped his arms around me. Wrap your arms around each and every person today. And I'm asking you, can you anoint every head with oil and fill every cup to the brim? If there's anybody here who lost their cup, their cup was stolen, give them a brand new cup and then fill it up to overflowing. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, he is more than enough. He's El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. Amen. How many know him as El Shaddai? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. El Shaddai You've blessed me so exceedingly You've kept your promises Father And you've been a good God to me Almighty Father El Shaddai, you pour your life into me. Nourishment provider, strength giver, satisfier, you're such a good God. sufficient El Shaddai <laughs> you're 
everything that I need. You smooth out the rough, cause you're more than enough. And you've been a good God to me. Almighty Father, help shed into me the nourishment provider strength giver satisfier you're such a good God to me almighty father El Shaddai Such a good God to me. <laughs> to me. Yeah. There you are. <laughs> smooth out the rough because you're more than enough you're such a good God to be no matter what's ahead you smooth out the rough because you're more than enough you're such a good God to me. What about February? You smooth out the rough, cause you're more than enough. Come on now. You're such a good God to <laughs> Come on. Come on, just grab a hold of this. Grab a, I'm grabbing a hold of it. I'm grabbing a hold of it. You grab a hold of it. I know some people said, you really are peculiar. <laughs> I actually am. I actually am peculiar. Very peculiar and getting even more peculiar. And <laughs> Father, I go walking in the word. Things I say, the world thinks absurd. Confessing the best is mine, is my routine. Schooling the man inside, the brand new me. to me. 
religious folks sometimes they get upset hearing that we have what we confess green with envy of watching me succeed watching my god supply every need come on and sing with me now thinking can agree peculiar are the way of God's debris And all of us are peculiar because you've got special people. <laughs> the Lord hired special people to do the job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at all these peculiar people playing things. Each thing has its place. By itself, it's good, but when it all comes together, it's beautiful. By ourselves, you're good. When we all come together, everybody's needed. And then it makes one beautiful sound in worshiping and praising the King. Because that's what we're here to do today. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's what we're here to do today. Welcome to the River Church main event. Whatever we said, just follow. I can't remember nothing right now. So we talk a little bit about this flow. I, 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 I'm like, amen. <laughs>
Bible days They had been sick for so very long Oh yes But one day Jesus passed away And when he spoke Their disease was healed that day But you know what they did? They all went on They went on the merry, merry way But only one returned and said I've got something I'd like to say He said, I just want to man is everything to me. Yes, he is. Because I remember a time when a job for me was so hard to find. Still the Lord made a way for me just in the nick of time. Yes, he did. Some of you had heard about when I was sick and the doctor said I would not get well. But the Lord touched and healed my body. And right now I'm able to tell
it's about, it's about like we finished up last night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ma, 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 ma. What's happening here right now is so scriptural because the word says that everything that hath breath praise him. So if you have breath, that breath must come forth from you and just praising him and thanking him. Because if we don't praise him, the rocks cry out. And I don't want to become redundant because of a rock. Can you say amen? I want to praise him. How many just sense his presence here today? Say this out loud, I'm not leaving this place <laughs> until it's over. And I'm not leaving this place. They say, my king, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. And just so you know, I could, I could get lost for another hour in, um, in, in worship. So there's a lot of things we, we need to accomplish today in the Holy Ghost. That's not a program we, <laughs> nothing we do here. It's all about a flow. Can you say amen? And uh, so I want you just to turn to greet two or three people, tell them we love them, Jesus, love them. Thank you to the choir. Thank you to the orchestra and all the singers and everything, the band, we love you so much. I want to welcome you all today to the main event, and we want to tell you we're so happy you came. We pray that the Lord really touched your life in a special way. If you're visiting with us, as we always tell people, well, just act like everybody else, and nobody will know the difference. Amen. And uh, just press into all that heaven has for you today. God's got something very, very special for you. Amen. Wow, all I can say about this week is wow. Somebody said, what are you talking about? Because the Lord really touched me. And even last night, that whole message was actually for me. I was preaching to me, which is fine. I'll explain that a little bit more. Somebody said, well, I wasn't here last night. Well, go listen, then you'll see what I was preaching to and what I was preaching about. We do have water for everybody. Anytime you need water, go get it. We have... Um, What's the other? I always forget. Huh? Electrolytes, yeah, that's why. I, I can, I, you know, it's hard when you're under the influence to remember everything. You can't remember. Sometimes I don't even remember people's names. I just go, hey, you come here. Amen. So uh, we have electrolytes for you. All this, this is on us. We don't charge for that. We just want to bless you, please. The restrooms are there. Try to use them when you need to. Don't all make a rush. Then you have to wait. Is there enough restroom for everybody to go? So if you feel the, the need to go, then please go. We don't need to clean up the floor of the pavilion later because you held it too long. Amen. 
All those watching my television calls are coming in from Manhattan, New York, Bo Boise, Idaho. I mean, just different places. One prayer. We're going to pray for these before we go there, which I believe on that satellite is at about one. And then, of course, we receive communion. And uh, I'm not going to rush to fit into anything because there's a flow to what we're doing. This week's been so awesome. We've had 10,967 people register from... 73 countries in all 50 states in-house coming through the building of eight days, 6,346, and then online, 4,621. 4, and uh, now, yes, this is what you're going to realize online, even though they registered just the viewership, total live stream viewership. This is not counting CTN, which is live across edition, direct platform. This is not counting our own network that covers the globe on satellite, free to air, and millions. Just the people, individual IP addresses, 330,817 viewers, which many times, it's not one, it's two or three, and in some houses there's 10. So if you just multiply, they say the average is three. You're looking at a million people that were also part just on the social media platforms. So, and then all the, the continual viewing, you know, people watch later, and we've got people that watch a delayed day or whatever. So, what an amazing, amazing time, um, just in the presence of the Lord. That's all I can say. Now, in the month of March is the ladies' conference, which is going to be very important for all the women, and uh, the title is VIP, you VIP. Every woman's going to become a VIP, which is going to be hard for some of the husbands to handle that suddenly you've got a VIP in his house, but she needs to be treated like a VIP. So that's all the clip for the ladies' conference, if you would, please. Twentieth of March through the 23rd of March, VIP Covenant Women's Conference. The men can look after the children at home while they send mom to come. Amen. It's probably one of the Mac systems that crashed or something, you know, something happened. The latest technology. It's just not a one touch, one experience, but it's pressing in. You're gonna leave changed, you're gonna leave different. It's not gonna evaporate, it's not gonna leave you. Some of you, he's gonna start something in you. Some of you, he's gonna continue what he's done. Some of you, he's gonna take you to another level. Just let God do what He wants to do. But you need to make yourself available and I need to make myself available. And together, the will of God is done. Just one person gets hungry, it'll overflow to many lives. Valuable, important, and precious. Amen. But knowing my wife, she has many other things that fit that acronym. Amen. Praise God. And then I was praying for the theme for the minister's conference, the leader's conference in the month of March, uh, May, 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 month of May. And uh, I wasn't going to force anything. You know, it has to flow. And uh, you'll see whatever you try to force doesn't come like you want it to. You, you have to back off and let the Lord do it. And uh, even somebody said, well, you do it so easy. Um, no, I struggle to do it. And um, I learn still. Somebody said, you've been doing it a long time. Yeah, but you still do. You, <laughs> you try to make it happen. I don't know why we always think we've got to help the Lord. I'm going to help God in this. You know? <laughs> he's, he's taking his time. And the Lord says, hey, what are you doing? So um, it dropped on me on Thursday. It was a Thursday, Thursday morning, right at the end of the service. It hit me like a sledgehammer. And uh, Tony and the whole team worked together 
and by Thursday night we released it. So let's play the clip for the up and coming conference in May, which will also result in the graduation of River University. Can you say amen? Roll it. is coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. to be escalated and the power of God is going to flow forth from the church it shall be shouted from the mountaintops until the whole of America knows that Jesus is alive that he is real that he is coming soon the shout the shout that will be heard around the world the shout that will come in your nation I know everybody thinks we're great. I'm, I'm going to hear it. No, it's coming out of you. You all understand it. You don't understand it now, but it's coming right out of you. Amen. That's why it's a shout that will be heard around the world. Praise God. I just want Pastor John Fanikak to come and greet you. He's from, they're from Peter Bansberg, him and his wife, Kathy. And they, we're going to be with them in the church. I want him to just come up and greet you. And um, we're going to be in the church in, uh, in the African trip coming up. And praise the other congregation, amen, so I believe, Pastor. Thank you. By a donkey. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I greet you all in the lovely name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God gave to us a word that Peter Mattersburg is going to be a portal city for the glory of God. And the way things look now, it doesn't seem possible, but we are going according to the word of the Lord. Last year, when Doctor was in Durban, we began to chat and I said to him that Peter Marisburg has a, a role in the purposes of God. The city is going to experience an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that is going to become a portal city. And then I said, sir, you have a part to play in that. Remember? And then I said, can I plan for 2025? But it's the year of acceleration. And God's servant has moved it forward to April this year. We can't wait to have you to activate that season of outpouring. And God bless you. Love you. Have you been blessed? What do you think is going on here? Wow. Um, we are blessed. We've been reflecting when we went home to the, where we're sleeping. And we're talking about it, talk about the worship, talk about the word. And I'm thankful to God 
like I said before, that if, if I only came for one thing, and that was when the Lord touched my wife and gave her a double dose. Because the pressure was on her from all the stuff yeah. happening in the nation. Yeah. And then the power of God hit her, and now look, she's smiling, she's happy, she's laughing. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you again. Amazing. And on behalf of the church in Peter Mattersburg, we welcome you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. We love name. you. God bless Amen. you. God bless See you soon. soon. And we'll be there April, Monday and Tuesday, the 22nd and the 23rd in Peter Mattersburg, which actually our family has a big history there because my uncle passed it there from the days right off the Depression, built the first um, Bible school for one of the big Pentecostal denominations back in the late 30s. And even the way he built that church was supernatural because they didn't have the money right off the Great Depression. And he prayed. And um, <laughs> railroad trucks full of bricks showed up and they knocked on the door and said, um, Dr. Howard Brown, because uh, he's the older brother, so he's much older. He died back in, in the early part of the, of the century. Uh, he was 94, so he would have been like 100 and whatever, you know. So he, he lived a long time, so he's not... My dad, he was 18 years older than my father. My dad died at 81 back in 2005. So you can work it out. There were four brothers, and my dad was the baby. So they said, um, Dr. Howard Brown, we were told to deliver these bricks here to this house. And said, there's no, or sorry, there was a dress, but said, it's the, it's the right street, but there's nothing here to deliver. And I cannot wait. I have to get this load delivered. I've got to run other loads. And so I called the company back up in the city of Pretoria. And um, they said, look, just dump it. Just dump everything and then get back up here as soon as possible. So he said, would you take them? He said, yeah, you see that open piece of land there? Put all the bricks there. All the bricks were there to build the whole church. All the bricks were there to build the whole church. Then, and he told amazing stories. You know, we talk about transformation and um, um, he was receiving two American missionaries that would come to the house and they had no food. But he didn't act like it. He said, to, he told his wife, listen, two American missionaries are coming to the house. We have no food. Here's what I want you to do. I'll, I'll go pick him up from the train station. I'll bring him back to the house. We'll fellowship. Just serve some tea and then deck the whole table ready for a full meal. She said, we have nothing. She said, listen, just deck the whole table for a full meal. And you ring the bell. You know, everybody was customer me back that time to ring the bell for dinner. The dinner bell, ring the dinner bell. Today, everybody just looks at their phone and eats and nobody talks. But back in them days, you all sat around and actually talked and engaged with people. And, um, and so uh, he was there, she brought tea, she brought everything, and, and then the bell rung. And he walked out and there was a full meal with every course. And, I mean, everything from the starters to the main course, to the desserts, to everything with cutlery, all this, everything beautiful. So he thought, wow, my wife must have performed a miracle. So uh, they ate, they blessed the food and things finished. He took the people back, he got back home. He said, man, that was an amazing meal. She said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you did that. She said, I thought you arranged that. He said, what are you talking about? He said, people knocked on the back door and they said, we must deliver this here and delivered it for me. And she said, they put it on the table. When I looked again, they were gone. I even went outside and couldn't find them. Now, so maybe that's the reason why I'm, I lean the way. I lean into these things because somebody unpacked them for me a long time ago. Are you with me? Praise God. So, and, and he, they were there for many years. All my, my uncle and all my first cousins, all my second cousins and many of the third cousins. So, there's Al Browns all over the city. Um, I've never preached there before. I just stayed away. Because why go there? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't just want to go anywhere. I wait for the time and the purpose and the plan of God. And so this trip coming up in April is going to be awesome, epic. Can we roll the clip for the upcoming April trip across 
Africa, certain things are being moved around, and even some nations are being moved around. We'll make all the final decisions here in the next week. Roll, roll it, please. The Lord said to me, run to the nations. I came to light a fire. The Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Souls must be your number one goal for your life. From now to Jesus comes. Because when the fire touches you, you're gonna win souls and you're gonna bring in the harvest of souls. You have to get the word of the Lord for yourself. It's got a plan on the inside of you. So we're gonna see the harvest coming. Stand and fight by the power of the Holy Ghost. And tell the devil, you're not gonna have my country. You're not gonna have my nation. The whole of Africa is gonna be shaken by the hand of God. I see Africa ablaze! And um, so everyone is going to be a part of that. You all are a part of that. Just like that last trip, I'm leaving God for some big, big, big things. Can you say amen? And all, everything will be up on, on the website. Of course, the big Cape Town meeting where we rented the big stadium, three-day event, 600 buses, and the trains. Last night, Pastor Eric, you talked about the buses. You never mentioned the trains, and they're trying to get rid of the trains. I want them trains. I saw trains coming. We're going to give people free rides on trains to get to the stadium. Don't let them talk you out of it. The local pastors say, well, we don't need the trains. I want them trains. And if them trains are not running, Somebody's going to be on a train going somewhere else. They'll find themselves at Bight Bridge, which is right on the, uh, on the, um, on the northern part of Southern Africa. Now, I, I'm just going by what I see. Are you with me? If you go by what other people see, then you're going to be led by the outside external situation. You have to go by what's in your heart. Do what's in your heart. Nothing else. Nothing more, nothing less. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, before we go to the testimonies, and I see them lined up there, um, let's do this. We have some babies that we need to dedicate here today because members of the congregation are being fruitful and they're multiplying and they're replenishing the earth. And so we need to take of these little ones. So let's do that. I want um, Ava, Laura Lynn Morgan to bring your parents up. She's born June the 29th, 2023. I want Lucas, Jonathan, Daniels, to, born May the 28th, 2023. I want you to bring your parents up here, please, if you would. I want Esme, Joanna Wilson, born November 26, 23, to bring your parents up. And I want to pronounce this right. Got to get it right. Desia Mailoni Grace Mix. Born January the 9th of 2024. If you bring your parents up here, please. Thank you. So we'll just wait for you. I know they might be coming from the mother's room, so that's a whole thing. Honey, come up here and stand with me if you would, please. Of course, we, we don't believe in the practice of uh, sprinkling children, but we do. Of course, the child's not involved in any of that stuff. Somebody said, well, the child's not involved in this. Well, this is basically as like Jesus was brought to the temple. These people have brought their children, and the families are welcome to come stand with them, obviously. Come stand with them. But the Bible's very plain where it says, you know, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. And one thing this church has is many babies because people are being productive. 
<laughs> in, in the circumstance what took place in 2020 and 2021, 2022, there were people that had a fear to bring children into the world. And I said to people, look, there's never been a time in the world that there was not stuff going on. God has put in your life these precious children that actually were sent from heaven to bless you, and not only bless you, but bless many. That you don't actually know who you're holding in your hands right now. When we were in one of the African countries, the mother of the president was sitting at the table and I said to her, I said, did you know that your son would be president? She said, I didn't. I gave him to Jesus as a baby. But she said, I saw he was always different. He did different things than other kids did. And I realized that he was being prepared for something. So God's hands on these little ones. And you represent the Lord to them. That's why the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they'll not depart from it. And you're going to have to repeat yourself until you repeat yourself to where you say, I've told you once, as my mother said, I've told you a thousand times. And you think, I'm going to go crazy, but you're not. Just keep repeating it. And one day, what you repeated will come out of their mouth, and you'll see. Sweet on. So, this blessing right here, you guys are fulfilling scripture, and that when the command of God that says, you'll be fruitful and multiply. And so, He wants us to be fruitful and multiply in every area, and be very fruitful in every area of our life, and increase in multiplication always. And so, you know, we cannot afford to take advice from the world. We have to take advice from the Word of God. And when people are concerned, you know, the world's, they made people so afraid that the world is ending tomorrow that people say, well, I don't want to bring kids into this world. Well, anything you do out of fear is not going to produce good fruit. But what you do out of faith will produce good fruit. And if God gave us a command, then that command stands over and above anything that man has to say about it. It doesn't matter what year we are living in. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world. We obey God's command because his word is eternal. Everything in the world is fluctuating and changing and going this way and that way. They can't even make up their mind. I mean, if, they, if you read all these things on parenting, you know, for, for a few years, they're telling you to do this, then they change their mind. Let's, oh no, some other expert comes in. Oh, you need, no, you need to do it this way. No, you need to do it that way. And then you're so confused and your kid's all messed up. And so just follow what the word of God says and don't worry about what all the voices out there say. Amen. Because God created us, he made us, and he knows what works. But one of the things we have to always make sure that we do, we have to make sure that our heart is right and that we're going to heaven. Amen. We have that hope and that promise if we are born again and we obey the word of God. And so it's our duty to put the word, to love our kids, to nurture them, to put the word into their heart, to make sure that they fall in love with Jesus. As we set an example of the father in the home, the dad sets the example of the father, the mother sets the example of the Holy Spirit. So with that commitment that you have to Jesus and the way that you live your life, sold out to the Lord, the children see that that's what they're going to follow. Because when Jesus comes, hallelujah, and when we hear the trumpet and when we are all carried up, we want our kids to be caught up with us not left behind. Amen. And so that's why it's so vital that we do raise them up in the things of God. And that if we've had a touch from the Holy Spirit, understanding our kids can't get it just because they live in our home. Your kid is not a Christian just because he lives in your home. Your kid has to have an encounter with God themselves. Listen, my mom has run our kids department for the longest time and she could tell. And she would tell the moms and some of them would be shocked that the kid wasn't actually born again. But don't worry, my mother would work on them until they did. So that was, <laughs> and very k kindly in a loving way, had some stubborn kids. And we had some kids come in here, like in the buses. Would you like to receive Jesus? Nope. But you know what? The love of God softens every heart. The Holy Spirit knows how to reach. The Holy Spirit knows how to reach you, and he knows how to reach your child. Every child is so different. But the Lord, as you seek the Lord, he will give you wisdom to raise your child in the way that he and she should go according to the, the hand of God, the call of God, 
and the gifts that are in them. And as Pastor Rodney said, he spoke to the lady who said, did you ever think that your son would reach this, this position in life? And she said, no, but I just gave him to the Lord. And, you know, she raised him the way the Lord told her to. And the Lord, because her son was wise, God elevated him. So who knows what the Lord is going to do through these beautiful little babies. So today, we get, this, is, this is a getting an agreement. It, it's, a, it's a covenant that we're making with the Lord. Lord, I'm giving you this child. And I thank you that the, your hand is on this baby. We'll never take your hand off this baby. And we will, and this baby will be as blessed and fruitful and prosperous as his parents until we all see Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And to the rest of you who set yourself in agreement with this, and um, if there's couples here, you've been afraid to have children, don't be afraid. Have many children. Have many children. Have a dozen of them. We've got a great children's ministry and we can look after kids. Amen. All right, come. So stretch your hand out towards them. Let me pray over them and then we'll come down and bless each child. Okay. Father, we just thank you for these precious families. And you have blessed them. And what beautiful children are here today. And I pray for a special anointing upon them. I thank you for your hand upon them. These three little girls, one little boy, that you're going to raise them up to be mighty men, and they're going to be mighty women of God, that they're going to bless many. Be about them as a wall of fire, that no harm and evil will come nigh to them. Sickness and disease shall be far from them. And Lord, you will raise them up in your word, your will, your way, and be about them. You'll carry them all the days of their life and make them a blessing unto many. They'll never lack. They'll walk in your health, and your hand is upon them. And we dedicate them now to the work that God has for them and the reason why the Lord put them here on the earth. In Jesus' name, and the baby said, amen. Praise God. Come, come down here. What a little bundle. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this sweetie pie. Look at that. Hey, baby. Isn't that amazing? You're happy? Obviously. Changes everything, doesn't it? We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Yes. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Come, let's take a picture. Don't do it. <laughs> Congratulations. Great job. Awesome. Awesome. Come. Father, we bless this little one. Look, 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 look at the camera there. Is that right? <laughs> totally awesome. Do you want to? Who's taking it? You know, it's, it's yours. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your hand. Hey, pretty girl. It's awesome. God bless you. She was talking when I was praying. Yeah, she was, she was the one in agreement. And then this little guy, all dressed up. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Father, we just bless him now. Come around me. In Jesus' name. It's okay, buddy. Okay. 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 Hurry up.
<laughs> Don't apologize. We try to get the photograph. Bless you, love you, congratulations, amen. Bless you. I'll shake the whole entourage here, <laughs> amen. Look at all those beads. You won't put the plaque back. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Come, let's stand around now. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. You know that when we opened the church at the first day of the stand, we had 11 babies to dedicate. 11. 11. If they had locked us down for another year, we'd probably have 30 or 40. And uh, of course, people were locked down, so they had nothing much to do. And then one more thing before we go to testimonies. We've had uh, Colonel David Jamona, who has, uh, is a retired man that served our country faithfully for many, many years, and God used him in a powerful way in the military. And now he's here, was a guest, addressed the university on Friday. He has his own program. God's using him and his wife, Esther, and he wanted to do something. Yes, I said, well, come, come on. He has something he wants to present. <laughs> Won't you give him a great God bless you? And tell the people what you did, what was your operation, and... Sure. Anyway, uh, Pastor, thank you for having me here today, my wife, and what a great week. Uh, if I start running, just don't try to catch me, I'm just going to go. <clears throat> I uh, served the Army for 32 years, I, to the rank of Army Colonel. Someone asked me, what, you know, were you in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines? I said, no, look, there's only one service. United States Army. Everybody else falls underneath us. <laughs> That's a joke, okay? Don't. <laughs> but I rose to the rank. I, I worked in the Pentagon for four years. I was in charge of all chaplains' assignments worldwide, all 1,700 chaplains. And then after that, and then after that, I went to San Antonio for my last assignment, and they made me the Installation Management Command Chaplain over all the Army installations of the world, and all the chaplains in those installations. I was in charge of religious support, spiritual transformation, and all those people, and all those 75 Army installations around the world. Well, you don't know this, but Pastor, you were standing right in front of me last night, <clears throat> and you were talking about weapons, rifles. And I told my wife, I said, he doesn't know what kind of artillery I've been around. Because I was in a tank battalion, M1A1, with a 120 millimeter smoothboard. And if you got in front of that tank while it fired, it would disintegrate you. Without even hitting you, the, the concussion would kill you. And then Pastor got in front of me last night when he began to pray over people. And I'm thinking, oh God, here comes the tank. And I'm in front of it. And boom! Man, I went right over. Right down. And man, it was fantastic. But... I'm not going to take all the time here, but I will tell you this. <laughs> you have no idea what power those tanks are. They're tremendous. They could hit another tank in two miles, traveling at 4,000 miles a second, and disintegrate that tank. 
while it's doing 60 miles an hour. But I got to tell you something, Pastor. We're at war. And I go around and my assignment that God has given me is to prepare the church for the end times and for the war that we are experiencing, we're going to experience. But I gotta tell you, I came to this church, I don't have to prepare it, it's already prepared. And it's ready to go forward in Jesus' name. And so I brought with me a very, very special token. I don't know if you can see this in the cameras. I'm gonna put this up. This is a very rare coin, a very special coin. I had made 200 of them as the M Installation Management Command Chaplain and are only given to people God says to give it to. And this means, Pastor, that God said give it to you because the greatest thing I can tell you in the army and in the military is brother, I would go to war with you anytime, anywhere, any place. And I'm not just talking about physical war, I'm talking about spiritual warfare. And I give this to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to bless you wherever you go. And this is how we do it, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Man. Thank you so much. We love you so much. Bless you. Give him a great God bless you. Wow. Beautiful. It says here, yeah, chaplains, United States Army. So great. Well, how many want to hear the testimonies of what's been happening here in Tampa this past week? Even while we've been at camp meeting, things have been happening. Pastor Derek is going to come preach the testimonies for us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. What an awesome week, seeing people's lives touched, empowered by the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. People have been empowered and touched, and today we have some testimonies to prove that. People came out of town, and today I want to call Paige, who was in the last Shreveport meeting, and uh, she heard about this meeting. She never knew about the ministry, knew about nothing. And uh, this week, God got her mobilized to get out as part of the army of God to win souls for Jesus. And now she can't stop talking. God bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Pastor, thank you so much. And the River Church, thank you for all giving. Thank you for coming to our city. Thank you for coming to our city multiple times. And um, ever since I've been here, I have been uh, bold with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. And what I've done is, um, is I'm in a, a hotel, and it apparently is a military um, a place where these young men are sent out. And so God has put me in the elevator with five uh, kids. He's put me at the uh, table. I have witnessed to over um, 30, from 35 to 40 people since I've been here since Sunday. And I use this script, and I am perfectly able to, to you know, I've got the gift of, of gab. But when I use this script, I am lifting up Jesus Christ and the gospel. And we do it powerfully and effectively. 
And we were planting those seeds. And um, I just thank you for showing me how to be mobilized. I, transfigured is the word because we are running with this. The vision is clear. We are commanded to go, to go and, and, and preach the good word of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so when I consider, should I, should I tell this soul about him? Should I tell this soul about him? I've already got my orders. And, it, and you've made it clear. And so I thank you so much. Um, and uh, it's just been, uh, you've, you've brought together, I, I, I had a ministry in, in my spirit, two of them, town hall ministries where the body of Christ is going to be coming together in Shreveport, working together, working together, and a mission possible. And this is mission possible, <laughs> possible, where we will all, all of the family of God, we will go out. Because when I tell these souls about uh, the Lord, and I ask them, do you know why you're going to heaven? They did not know. They did not give the right answer. So when we walk past people, um, one occasion is we were driving and literally, I've got a Bronco back home and I may have been a little reckless with this car, but we got a flat tire, me and one of the students here. And um, within five minutes, the Lord brought uh, I, I knew the provision was coming. He brought two men. They parked uh, um, in a truck. They came out. They, he started doing it like he had done this a thousand times. And of course he had because he was a mechanic. The Lord attracted a mechanic to my blown out tire. And, and the girl that is in Bible college here, she had it in uh, Spanish and she had it in English. And while they were doing it, we didn't miss one moment. She was speaking in Spanish. She doesn't even speak Spanish. She's from Ukraine. And she was speaking so fluidly. And, he, and, and all these cars are zooming by. And these guys are like, what are we doing? We are being set up here. And, uh, and it was just such a Holy Ghost encounter, but Amen. multiple cases like that. So please don't be ashamed of the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job. Amen. Paige. Sandy, now you're from Milwaukee, and this is an interesting story. Uh, Pastor, her pastor started teaching on the anointing and played your video in the church. Never heard about it, and that's how she got to... So she comes down from... Uh, Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's okay. cold there, yeah. 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 But I was on Facebook, and that transfigured uh, meeting came out, and it hit me. And I went to church, and that day my pastor was teaching on the anointing. She used a clip of you. And I was like, uh-oh, -uh, this must mean I'm supposed to go. And so I came down here, and I have been so blessed. I've been in school. I've been trained. I've been, oh my God, you have commissioned, and you have... You're like a general. <laughs> and so I went to your soul winning class uh, outreach yeah. uh, this week. And I have never used a script before. And so for all you people that are have got a little timid in you or you may not be sure how to witness to someone, use this script. I'm telling you, it captivated the people. They didn't move. When I was reading, they were like, Rose. I said, oh, this script is anointed. And so uh, <laughs> there was a lady sitting in the car in the grocery, by the grocery store in the parking lot. I came over to her. She gave me every excuse that she could think of of why she could not give her life to the Lord. Finally, she said, I'm too old. She said, I'm 41. I laughed. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> I said, that has nothing to do with nothing. And finally she read it and she wept and she hugged me and she thanked me and I saw the heart of God. I said, God, you are about souls. So we Amen. need to be out here winning souls. Use this script. It works. I'm taking it back home. I'm telling my pastor, we're going to use it to the, to, all the way to the end and win souls for Jesus. That's so awesome. So you already got camouflage on. You look like you're in the military right now. And uh, yeah, you, God's going to use you. Two will join you, then three, then four, then five, then six, then ten, and you're going to win. That whole air is going to be shaken. Yes. Amen. Yes. God bless you. Amen. Indiana. Well, Indiana got miraculously saved in one of Evangelist Uncut's meetings, and then came to healing school. She came with cane. She couldn't walk. Multiple things wrong with her. But the power of God still flushes out every plan of the enemy. And look at her today coming to testify of the goodness of God. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, I did go to Evangelist Unkent's uh, Tender Miracles. Um, it was the night before healing school, actually. And it took me forever to even get to the door because every step that I took, it was just so painful. I was in pain all the time. Um, no one even laid hands on me, let me just say that. I went up to the front, um, he did a prayer, and I said, God, I'm putting the demand on the anointing. I want to be healed tonight. And I started to move around because I had a fusion, a spinal fusion. I could not bend forward. So he said, do something you couldn't do. So I started to like move around and then I bent all the way down. And as I was like, God, thank you. Because he healed me. He healed me of that. Um, I threw my cane on the altar. <laughs> I didn't need it anymore. And then also, um, Recently, I'm, I'm, I was blind in my left eye, um, and I was in school, because I'm here at the River University first year. Um, <laughs> and um, I usually like check my eyes since healing school. I'm like, can I see today? Okay, not today, but Holy, I didn't check this day. Holy Spirit said, check your eye. And in the class, there's a screen that says River University on it, and I was able to see every letter, every letter. And um, last thing I want to say, because he's done many things, but just the last thing I want to say, um, I was a diabetic, and it's been three weeks with no insulin, and I feel great. <laughs> and I thank you, God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord praise. Yeah. Let me remind you, next healing school starts February, Monday, February the 5th, and it goes for two weeks. Uh, you have to register for that, and then you can register for the next session as concurrently. Right, right after that. The reason we did that because it was a two-week gap. And then many people contacted me on social media said, listen, when can I come to healing school? I said, you have to wait two weeks. They said, I'm dying. I've got seven days to live. So I want to just get on, get on playing, get here as quickly as possible. So that's why we're doing this. Amen. So. Monday, February the 5th, and then Monday... February the 19th. Well, Sarah, you had a blessed week this week. God still rewards, provides, and you made some decisions to act in faith. Tell us what about the provision of God. Yes, sir. Thank you. So good morning, River Church. <laughs> uh, I am a second year Bible student for RBIE. That's River Bible Institute Español. <laughs> Woo-hoo! <laughs> So um, I just want to thank Pastor Rodney and every single instructor who has poured into us and has really uh, hit, hit us with the word. You know, the word of God is like a rock. So we are continuously being taught to um, come up with scriptures uh, for things that we're praying for and things that we're believing for. And there was a lot of excitement um, behind this conference. And something that God dropped in my heart is to be able to come to conference with no interruptions. Um, I'm a single mom and I come to school, so my time has to be strategically organized, right, so that I can en make ends meet. In the physical, in the natural, people would say, it would be crazy for me to not work for the week, but that's the decision that I made. And I put you know, a demand on the anointing and I know that according to Philippians 4.19, he shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, all of my needs. So I put a demand on the anointing. I served in translation for whenever it was that they needed me. And I got my first Pentecostal handshake after... <laughs> After Pastor Eric declared the word <laughs> that we should expect for double, and the handshake that I got was double of what I would have made during the week that I decided to take off of work. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let me tell you, if he did it for me, this single mom, right, who was apparently struggling, he can do it for you. The word works. We're not following what we're saying. We're not following our feelings. We're following what the word of God says, and we are believing it because it is true, it is real, and it is Hallelujah. eternal. And if it worked for me, it's going to work for you. Amen. Amen. That's totally awesome. Thank you, My donkey.
amazing what the Lord's doing in the lives of each and every person. I want to take a few minutes and talk to you just about something the Lord dealt with me about. And um, obviously, it was made very plain last night. Uh, who was not here last night? Wave your hand at me. Wave your hand all across the room. It's fine. I mean, but you're here today, so that's wonderful. You know, when God spoke to us, really, I'm, I'm not going to go back any further than what started happening in 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Everything around here has been supernatural. Everything around here has been supernatural. From, from, the, from the pavilion to everything that we've done. In actual fact, we never really stressed over anything. We just flowed and we were surprised by the Lord on a daily basis. And it was so supernatural because we pay, you know, as you know, we pay cash for everything. And so here we are and we, in the building. So I'm not talking about the church now. That was all done. I felt the flow of that. And, but this next phase of the pavilion was really frustrating me because everything was taking time. We couldn't get the clearing. We're waiting for the permits. And now the permits are coming through. But this was already we, we months and months and months behind. So I was feeling the pressure. I really wanted to get everything done by October because I feel the urgency. And then what happened was things started breaking loose in the nations, Africa, and then we have to return, and then London. And I felt the weight of it. I felt the pressure on it. Nobody, you know, might understand that, but I felt, and I have some stuff that I'm believing, believing God for in the business realm that just didn't break. That was very frustrating to me and very irritating because I just want to pay for the thing myself. Because when you believe in God for, you know, 18.5 million for, for another phase, and then the inside of that's another 20 million, so you're looking at 42 million. Not that the God has, everything else has been, I think we put 27 million into everything, that's all been paid. So that was a flow. There was no stress to it. But this was like something that would, and, and even though the pavilion is there, we still don't know what is going to happen on the inside because everything's still, and so I can't put my faith to it. I cannot, I'm the type of person that's impossible for me to put my faith to what I can't see. So I have to see it here first. It doesn't matter who talks to me, tells me whatever. You can show me, you can show me pictures and everything. But if I can't see it, I can't do it. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not like that. And I know a lot of people come with concepts and ideas but that's their concept and their idea. I have to get the mind of God. Are you with me? Because remember, anybody with a concept or idea can leave. I'm stuck here with people's concept and idea. Then what do I do? So it was starting to bug me. And I'm in faith. Somebody said, if you get irritated or bugged, you're not in faith. No, you're in faith. God's just talking to you. And I've shared this with... Pastor Kenneth, and he said, Dad, I was also kind of bugged a little bit. I said, well, then you should have talked to me. He said, well, I didn't want to get out of faith. I said, we are in faith, but God's talking to you. You know, faith is not, oh, everything's just positive. Yeah, let's do that. It's faith. No. What does God want? Well, he wants things done, but I'm feeling a hold or a check. And here was the thing. So I, I said to the Lord, how in the world am I going to pay for the cities and the building at the same time? And he said to me, focus on the cities and I'll do the building. Amen. And that's fine for the Lord to say, but I'm down here, we have to make payments. <laughs> no, no, seriously, we have to make payments. So, you know, me, I want this stuff done. We're going to have it by October, it's going to be done. So obviously, every month that we go by that we haven't started now, the bill's not going up, it's still the same amount, but we're having to cram more per month to meet the deadline by October. So, you know, um, yesterday I get the sheet and I'm looking at the sheet and, you know, this next month's like 150,000, the following month, 250,000. Then I look, the next month, 2.5 million over and above budget. Then the next month, another 2.5 million. I go, whoa, 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 stop the bus. I, look, we, it's a meet a deadline in October. I changed the deadline, much to my irritation, but I changed the deadline. 
Somebody said, well, where are you moving? And I spoke to Brother Tony. He said, Pastor, even if all the money was here, we still couldn't build right now because of the process. So because we're going through the process, it slowed everything down. Remember, we didn't go through the process to do all this. We built this with no permits. We built that with no permits. They all have permits now, so everything's legal. <laughs> so there was, no, there was nothing holding us back. We could just build. And, and when they came to inspect, we had three inspectors. We, three independent inspectors inspected what we did, and we over-engineered everything so when they could find no fault with anything. Because we over-engineered. We, I'm not stupid. I knew we had to do it properly. So I was, I was praying yesterday afternoon, and I just said to my son, I, said, I called Tony, I said, I'm not doing it, I can't, I'm not going to do this because this is going to totally distract from the nations, and then I'm going to not be focused on the nations, I'm going to be focused on the building. And I said, to be totally honest with you, the pressure got to me. I was under major pressure coming out of last year. December was probably the roughest month for me, because I felt the pressure, how are we going to do? You know, I'm, I'm already ahead. I'm already functioning in uh, the, the meetings in London. I'm on the phone. I'm signing contracts for 350,000 pounds, or I'm going to be signing for 350,000 pounds for advertising, and then all this other stuff that has to be done. And we are busy committing for Africa and all this stuff, and then I look and there's a building standing at me, and I go, what, 2.5 million? I ain't doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. We're going to build, but I ain't... I'm not carrying the pressure of this thing. So last night, you know, you can preach right to yourself. The Lord gives me a passage of Scripture. So I said, Lord, what has this got to do with the offering? He said, well, just read it, son. You'll find out. And boy, <laughs> did I find out last night. I was preaching to me. So let me preach to me again this morning. And then I'll <laughs> explain to you what we're going to do. Amen. So go with me in the book of Numbers, and um, we'll go to Numbers, and we'll go to chapter 20. And I want to say this. I felt this in my spirit. The Lord said, just like you have done this, there are people in church doing that because, and you'll understand. And it's, somebody said, how, come on, pastor, can't be that... Uh, you, you, here you are hearing from God and then suddenly you start. It's the human nature to take on things that you end up trying to help God or something angers you and then you move in, you move in the wrong direction. You're still forging ahead, but now you're not moving empowered by the Spirit, which is a theme of what I've been talking about the whole week. I just didn't know I was going to slap myself up the side of the head last night. So if anybody gets slapped here today, enjoy it, because I've had to enjoy it myself. Now there was no water in the congregation, and they assembled together against Moses and Aaron. The moment stuff goes wrong, then there's congregation assembled against, against the leaders. And, 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 and leaders do not go into place of leadership if you can't take the heat. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. I mean, this is the way it is. And you can't take it personal. You just have to stay humble and just keep quiet, don't react, listen to what people say, but that's just the way it is. How many have had, in a leadership position, have had a confrontation from somebody that you are dealing with? Wave your hand at me, all those that understand. And it can either go bad or it can come out good. It, goes, it comes out good if you do what, what they did. And the people continue with Moses. Now they start to complain. Would that we had died when our brethren died in the plague before the Lord. You know, people come around here. Well, I just should have stayed up in that state where they were locking down. And would that I just, uh, had, uh, the people were dying of COVID. As I should have mentioned that. They were dying of um, whatever. They were, uh, who knows? I just got to be careful what I say. Here. They were dying of a plague. And... Um, and, uh, and I, we, should, we should just go back to the state where we were locked down in our house and the governor said this and all this kind of stuff. And now we've come down to the river and uh, where, where is all of this stuff that we thought was going to happen? 
Why have you brought uh, the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness that we should die here and our livestock? And why have you made us come out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly, now watch this, to the door of the tent of the meeting of the tabernacle and fell on their faces. So here's what leaders do, and, and this is for everybody here, this is what leaders do in the time of any trouble. You hear what the problem is, then you go and get on your face before God. And what does the, the Bible say? Then the glory of the Lord appeared to them, which is what transfigured is all about. And when the glory of God, like Saul on the road to Damascus, and we go on and on, Moses up on the mount, the glory of the Lord comes. And then when the glory of the Lord comes, the word of the Lord comes. So what I'm always looking for, and you know me, I'm always looking for the word of the Lord. If I don't feel the word of the Lord on it, I cannot move. It's like I get paralyzed and people say, come on, you've got to make a decision. I can't make the decision. It's not in me. I do not have, well, it might be a nice idea. I cannot do it. We're going to have to put the brakes on. I'm not saying we're not doing it. We're going to do it. But I can't just pull $18.5 million out of my back pocket. We don't have our own printing press to do that. And once you start that ball rolling, it's there. There's no stopping that, which that happened with that. And we did, we did $11.5 million in five and a half months. And even though we saw the hand of God, that took me to the outer limits of my mind. <laughs> you know, I've never been a builder, if you understand what I'm saying. I, I've helped other people build. I've sold into other buildings. It's so easy. Uh, we need to build. Oh, yeah, we'll help you. We give the money. They build. It's not my problem. But, it, but here it is. So, and the Lord said to Moses, now watch this. He said, take the, take the rod which, which represented the authority that had been given. This is the same rod that he stretched out and the waters parted. How many know the story? Three people here. This is really going to be a great morning. Um, <laughs> He raised his rod and the waters parted and um, assembled the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother. And then look what he said. Look what God said. This is very important that you hear what I'm saying. Tell the rock before their eyes to give forth its water and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock. So you shall give the congregation and their livestock drink. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord and he command, uh, commanded him. And Moses, Aaron, assembled the congregation before the rock and Moses said, now look now, now here's Moses who has already been given the command of the Lord of what to do, take the rod, assemble the people, the rod represents authority, come together. Now speak to the rock. But now he's already ticked off by the people because of their rebellion and they don't want to trust God. So he goes, yeah, now you rebels. <laughs> yeah, now you rebels. Must we bring you water out of this rock? And he lifted up his hand with the rod and he struck the rock twice. Boom, boom, like that. Did God tell him to strike the rock? No. What did God tell him to do? Speak to the rock. So as I'm reading this last night, I go, oh, no. Oh no, change the subject. This is too close to home. God help me. Jesus. Because what did the Lord say? Focus on the cities and I'll build the building. How? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to help the Lord. I'm going to help him build the building. I told you. Focus on the cities and I'll help you build the building. But Lord, but Lord, we've got to get this thing moving. I mean, don't you understand? I'm on a deadline here. Focus on the cities, and I'll build the building. That's hard, Lord. There's preparation. There's things that need to be done. We're on a time schedule. We've got a whole proposal laid out. Focus on the cities, and I'll build the building. It's easier said than that. Yeah, I am struggling. It started probably right after I finished Africa and I got back. I just started feeling the burden knowing 
this is the next big thing. I didn't know God was saying, go back, hit Africa for a month, and then I want to do London. I'm thinking, now, 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 this is getting out of hand now. This is getting over the top. I mean, just, there's only so much. I mean, there's something. There's only so much one person can do. And I'll be totally honest with you, in December, I just said, you know, I think I'm done. I just think I'm done. I get somebody else to do this and take it on. I, I can't do this anymore. Why? Because I'm, struck, I'm, I'm striking the rock. I'm, I'm doing the thing with my own strength now when I know what's supposed to be done. I'm supposed to speak to the rock. Obviously, you all don't ever face any of that. It's just <laughs> lowly me. This, this is probably confession day of confess your faults. Every, every one of you never struggle with any of this stuff. So please bear with me as I tell you. So here is, and the water came out abundantly. Somebody said, I don't understand that. I do not understand that the water still came out abundantly because God would protect his people and then deal with you privately. And three people said, amen. God will protect his people because, because here's the thing. If Moses had struck the rock and nothing came out, all the people, it would have been the worst situation ever. They would have said, you see, he doesn't have anything. It's time to whatever. They would have gone back to worshiping whatever they could because they come out of Egypt. They came out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. Can everybody hear me this morning? <laughs> Am I at the River Church? Yes. Yeah, I can see you. Try to respond to me. If I'm talking to you, try to, try to nod. Yes, Pastor, we're with you. We understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you too cold? Huh? Oh, now we get this response. <laughs> well, maybe the Lord's dealing with people right now because you've been starting to strike the rock when you, you, you flowed originally by speaking to it because that's how we operate. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it done. I feel the pressure. You feel the pressure. Who's given the pressure? Half of it is deadlines you set. Half of it is unexpected expectations unrealistic expectation that we should be at this level. Why aren't we at this level? We should be further right now. There should have been a greater quickening. I mean, they talk about double. They talk about increases, double. I mean, I need double. I need it now. I need double. I need it now. I want double. I want double by tomorrow night. If I don't get double by tomorrow night, I'm going to beat somebody. And the Lord's standing there going, what are you doing? What are, what are you doing? He yeah, but Lord, but, but the Lord, we got to do this. We need room. We got to Lord, new student body increase. We don't have enough classroom. We don't have a place for the people to stay. Where are we going to put all these people? We have 1,300 people registered for Bible school from internationally. They all show up. What are we going to do? The kids, the youth, the, the, the babies. We, we, Lord, we, we have to do this. We, we've got to do this. I'm in this with you constantly. Focus on the cities. I build the building. Yeah, I know that. Could you build it right now, please? <laughs> like, can I go to sleep and I come back, the building's built. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I didn't do anything. I just worshipped him. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, honey, look, there's a building built. <laughs> and the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in and rely on and cling to me, to sanctify me in the eyes of the Israelites, you therefore shall not bring the congregation in the land which I've given you. What? But God still helped his people.
God still helped his people. So, and I'm saying this because we always rejoiced about what God was doing and what the Lord's done. And then I felt, yeah, that's what the Lord done, but I got so much more to do. I mean, so there's so much more to do it was overwhelming to me. It was overshadowing what the Lord has done. It was every day I just get up and talk about what the Lord's done, but now I couldn't. I found myself saying, yeah, but I'll tell you what, we've got some big stuff, man. I'll tell you, this is big. I, we got to build this, but anyway, and that's what was coming out of my mouth. People say, man, isn't it amazing what the Lord's done? They come here this way. Yeah, but you can't believe what we have to do now. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, we, you're just not going to believe what we have to do now. This thing's huge. I mean, without God, you know, I'm, I'm a person, of faith. without God, we, we pretty much done. I'm thinking, I even think to myself, what are you doing? It's the weight. It's the weight of the thing talking. So, but before the service, I already made the change, and then I come preach to myself. So I'm just going to let you know, we, we recalculate everything. I'm taking the building out of the equation. I'm just sending the budget for the cities and stuff. I don't care what the building is. It could be 100 million. I don't give, I'm, I don't care now. I actually has taken this thing for a whole extraction. It doesn't matter to me. What was happening? I don't know. Talk to God about it. It doesn't bother me. I'm focusing on the cities. I'm focusing on what God wants. And the building is his problem. It's not my problem. And it's not your problem, Kenneth. It's not your problem in the finance office. It's not any of our problems. It's not even your problem. I don't want anybody to feel the burden of anything. This church is not about burdens. This church is about freedom and liberty and joy and blessing and God's goodness and grace. Amen. Amen. So then last night, you know, I said, Lord, then we go and get to Africa. So he said, well, just receive an offering tonight, get people to give their best, and then to pledge over the next three months, over, not out of what they have, believe God for extra thousand dollars over the next three months. He said, all the money will come in. So last night, and the offering last night was 111,000 came in and 850,000 in pledges over the next three months. Yeah. So, so, and that's phenomenal. So, and I believe more will come in. We just announced that. And, uh, you know, I am the pastor, yes. <laughs> I'm going to take the whole offering here today and put it into this whole, the road trips for Africa and what we're doing. This next Friday, we're going to be in Miami one night at Wood of Life there, with one night rally. The following Wednesday, we're going to be in Dallas for one night there. And the following Thursday and Friday, Saturday morning, we're going to be in Las Vegas with an evangelist that used my face on a t-shirt, and he's doing something there, and I'm helping him. So, you know, I still help people that have hurt me greatly. And abuse me. I still go out of my way to hurt them, even though I'm never appreciated, but I go help them. So those are the first, huh? No, I said, when they go out of their way to hurt me, what did I say? I do go out of their way to hurt So, no, I never hurt people. I just help them. I help people, even when they go out of their way to hurt me. So that's what we're going to do. That's three cities here, just for the first part of February, and there's some other things that will happen in February, then March, some other cities will hit in America, and the ladies' conference, and then April is the Africa trip. We get right back, a couple of cities early May, then the big graduation, the Shout Conference, and the graduation of River University, and then Summer School of Evangelism, and then the big meeting in London. So, and that's all I'm focusing on, the building. So what I did, I called Brother Tony. I said, I'm going to stretch it out. So he's giving me some numbers, and I'll stretch it out to, I said we stretch it out to, um, uh, I can't remember now, uh, sometime early next year, maybe March or April, May, whatever. And if that's, I'll just stretch it out to October. I'll stretch the thing out until the thing happens, because I am not going to carry this thing. Did you... I'll just say, do you know how many pastors quit the ministry after they built? 
And I, knew, I wasn't going to do that after we did this, but this was feeling like, okay, I'm going down a road right now that I've seen over 44 years because I've dealt with the pastors, and you get there. And that's, I remember now that I started to talk like some of the pastors that I arrived in their churches, and I said, man, we're going to have a great revival. Yeah, but we got to pay the bills. Yeah. <laughs> that's all they thought. We could have a great move of God. Yeah, but we owe, we owe uh, $42 million. You can't even believe one way. And I, I, of course, I said, it doesn't matter. God's going to turn things around. God's going to give you a miracle, which we saw miracles. And we saw their buildings paid off. But they were carrying the load. Now, if you would be honest with me, how many felt yourself starting to strike the rock when you should be talking to the rock? Ah. So what do you do? Somebody said, well, does that mean I'm not going to go to the promised land? <laughs> no, we're not under law. <laughs> we're not under law. Yeah. We're under grace. Yeah. However, however, if you continued, it could kill you, and then you couldn't see what God, you know what I'm saying? because the burden would be too great. So here's what we're going to do right now as a congregation. Instead of striking, we're going to speak. That's what we've always done. We speak. We speak to the mountain. So now listen. It doesn't matter how dry the place is. It doesn't matter where... And I'm going to talk about that we in some dearth or whatever. We're not behind. We're not in the hole. We're not, don't, we're not in debt. Nothing. Everything we pay cash for. So I'm not talking about some crisis. There is no crisis other than the crisis I'm creating. <laughs> we have a deadline. Well, then there's a crisis then. Who made it? Me. <laughs> so I'm removing the crisis. In all, so in a desert place, Okay, well, where, 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 there's no water. Uh, speak to the rock. Then water begins to flow. So that means I can go anywhere, which is the way we function, even in desert places, and speak to a rock, and the water flows. And there, everything is God. Everything around here is the Lord. If you looked around this whole property, you'd have to say, it's the Lord. And I would tell people, I'd sit around the table and cry, but I noticed the last couple of months, you know, everyone comes here, I'm overwhelmed, this is just amazing. Yeah, but you can't believe what we have to do. I mean, I've got to believe God for this. I mean, this is really, a, you know, and, and I never talked like that, and yeah, I found myself doing that, and that. So I had to really repent. I said, Lord, please forgive me for striking the rock. And then sometimes it could even be a pe I'm going to beat you with that rod. You know what I mean? I don't know if I will. <laughs> but you deal with people. I will beat you. I will beat you with this rod right now. There's going to water come right out of your head. Because some people do have water on the brain, so they need a tap on the head. Anyway, so my apologies to anybody that does have water on the brain. God forbid that should I fed anyone in that condition. But as you know, I thought about killing two birds with one stone. My apologies to all those that love birds and are ornithologists. And, uh, <laughs> but I didn't want it to fall on deaf ears, you understand? Again, sorry, my apologies to those in the deaf community. I know some of you won't understand it. It's just my humor. By the way, the news program this morning is the most ridiculous news program I've ever done. Every account is the most insane thing that's happening around the planet. You have to watch it. It's on Twitter later. <laughs> Boris, Boris Johnson recruiting people for the British Army. <laughs> it's like the biggest. I, I looked at it like... And then the, the commercial for the British to recruit army because we're going to war. It's the most insane commercial I've ever seen. It's all on my news program. You have to watch it. I would play it now, but I don't know. Somebody might try to ban me for copyrights. That's mine. 
That's my, that's my commercial. Well, it, it, it's the, it looks like something out of um, Monty Python. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> It's like a Monty Python advertisement. So, so here's what we're going to do. And I'll, I'll announce to you next, I should know by next Sunday what we're going to do in that regard. Everything's in place. I mean, we're already laying things out. I've I got to get the elevators in. That's very important. Otherwise, you're going to be using the Stairmaster all the time up <laughs> to the balcony. How many, how many know those balconies are great seats? Okay. So you're going to be using the Stairmaster, so I've got to get those elevators in. And I do have an, I have an initial phase that I want to propose, which I'll talk to you about next Sunday, which was one of the initial phases I wanted to propose anyway. So I'm going to go back to the initial phase of what I saw for the first phase of the whole thing, which we can do anyway, and we could actually do that by October. So, so it's not, nothing's off, everything's still on, I'm just slowing it down, which is not my nature. It's not my nature. It's totally contrary to everything inside me, every fiber of my being screams. But I will now submit myself, and I ask again the congregation to please, once again, forgive me for trying to get something done because we have a need of space. So, uh, am I forgiven? Yeah. Okay. So, I will, I'll unveil that next Sunday, and you, know, you can be excited about it. It's going to be great. And then, <laughs> once we work everything else, we'll unveil that, and you'll go from there. But the building will be built, everything will be paid for cash, and I'll still be alive. And nobody's going to die from a rod up the side of the head. Can you say that? <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll never come on the property and there'll be a fountain, you know, like this. And water coming out of somebody's fingers. Somebody said, what happened? Oh, there was one of the congregation members. Pastor Rodney hit him in the head and they became a fountain. And they just standing there, you know, like there's fountains with people. So... Uh, <laughs> But here's what we're going to do, and this is not just for the ministry. This is for you to take your foot off the accelerator in some areas. And obviously, because of the message that we preach, I'm a product of what I preach. But I also remind people we're going to let God do it. But then I also fall into the trap that every human being does where you try to help the Lord. Yeah. Man, I'm so excited about what God's doing. We're going to do this over here. Okay, God, how can I help you? He goes, let me do it. No, no, I help. <laughs> I help. I help too. <laughs> you watch with your kids. You try to get something done. They, you know, I help. And they, they're not able to help. The thing's too big for them. And so God wants to do it for you. Amen. So... I'll just pray, Father, I publicly pray and ask you to forgive me for striking something when I should never have, and I don't even know how I got in that place, but we will not do that anymore. From this day, we will speak to the rock in every endeavor, and the water will flow. And it doesn't matter where we find ourselves. We will not get anxious. We will not feel any pressure. I speak the release off of you today of any pressure whatsoever to produce what is going to come out of a rock anyway. Because it is impossible for us to cause water by our own hand to come from a rock. But it is by your hand that out of any rock, in places where it looks like there is no provision, in places where it looks like it's impossible, we can just speak and the water flows. Now just take a moment and I want you to give this to the Lord. Whatever you're dealing with in your ministry, your business, whatever you're doing, your family, when you started to feel the pressure, I want to alleviate that pressure right now 
in Jesus' name. So just take just a few minutes, and then I'll lead you in a prayer. Just take a few minutes, talk to the Lord. Say, I'm sorry for pushing and for striking the rock, the rock. And then, and then we'll pray, and then we're going to speak to the rock. Just take a few minutes. Some of you might be a little minor pebble that you were striking, but other people could be a big monolith. And some might even be talking to a whole striking a mountain. And sometimes we make a mountain out of a molehill. Now, this is only for those that found yourself in the same condition you, I found myself. You can pray this. The rest, you didn't do that. You're wonderful. I'm, I'm not being funny. I'm just saying it's great. The Lord did. I mean, you were able to come through whatever. But I'm just talking about that because I want to leave you in prayer. Just say, Father, right now, I'm asking for forgiveness, for striking when I should have spoken. And so now, I repent of that. From this day, I will no longer strike. I shall speak. So, we go back to the word that you gave us. The word you gave us is to speak to the mountain. So, from this day, I will speak to the mountain. And the water will flow. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to pray over this ministry. And you, you of course, have to do this over your own personal life, husband and wife. Or if you're single, just stand in front of a mirror and speak to the Lord and point at yourself. But let me pray. Father, I'm going to go back to the original word that you told me. You said to me, don't worry about the building. You said, focus on the cities and I'll build the building. In the name of Jesus, I speak the word of the Lord right now over the congregation for that river to begin to flow of provision miraculously and there shall be no pressure there shall be absolutely no pressure whatsoever. You shall rejoice. You shall look back at all that the Lord has done. You shall count the blessings, and you shall talk about the blessings, and you shall not talk about the mountain, and you shall not talk about the problems in front of you, and you shall rejoice, and you shall be exceedingly glad, and you shall focus on the mission, and you will win souls, and you'll go about your daily work, and you'll be patient, and if there's a deadline, you just move it out of the way, and you just extend it out, and you watch God come and bring it to pass. The Lord shall bring it to pass pass. And we thank you for it now. As a ministry from this day, we will focus on the cities and the nations, and the building is in your hands. And if people say, what about the building? It's in the hands of the Lord. What about the building? In the hands of God. And we'll watch you do it. We'll watch you do it again as you did it before. And we're so happy. So the burden is now lifted off of every one for everything, even for your own endeavors, that burden is lifted in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for it. And everyone said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we're going to receive morning tithes and offerings. And tithes and offerings, that's for the church and all that kind of stuff. And, but then there's things you can do. And I'm not saying, don't put your tithe in there now. Just give your tithe to the River Church. That's what, what is there. But then everything else over and above, we're going to put towards what we're doing with the cities. And just do your best, best today. Somebody said, I've done my best, best. We, we, we've broken so many alabaster boxes. Pastor, how alabaster is lying here on the thing. I know. I've got alabaster stuck under my heels Everywhere I want, you can't even walk through here barefoot. You get stuck with alabaster. So the, 
the bottom line is, the bottom line, God's doing a work in the hearts of his people. And I'm not saying we could, we could go by April and suddenly 30 million show up. I'm not, that's not, even if it came, even if it suddenly showed up, we still can't build because of the process. It's not the lack of money. It's the process and the pressure. If I bring busloads of Mexicans in, we can start tomorrow. I've already been offered the pastor from Mexico. So pastor, I bring busloads. Then I'm going to get accused of human trafficking. So then I go to jail. So we can do that. Thank you for the offer. I know you've got many Mexicans. We're going to bring busloads here from Mexico. They'll put it, they'll work 24 hours through the night and pick. We build this thing quick, quick. By the same token, I can bring down 300 armies. We build everything just in two days. But Again, even if we had everything we needed, we couldn't, we couldn't do it because of the process. I'm doing it legally now. No. <laughs> Understand. And the legal stuff takes time. Yes. Forms and filling out and stamps and irritating. <laughs> strike the rock. No, don't strike the rock. Don't strike the rock. Yeah. Speak to the rock. So here's what I want to ask you to do is to, uh, Pastor Eric, maybe you can tell me how we're going to do this. I don't want to hand out two offering envelopes, but on your envelope, you can designate, this is my tithe, this is, and here's what I felt. Do, do your best for the cities, for the, and only the next three months. Make a pledge, and if everybody can believe God, believe God for $1,000 over and above, supernaturally to come in. Who, how many believe if? God could give you an extra thousand dollars in the next three months, over and above everything, that you could be a part of this. That's what happened last night, 850,000 in pledges. I believe we had one pledge, 500,000. We had another, another person, believe it, well, they had no name on it, but it was 100,000 pledge. So, you know, so whoever no name is, the person with no name, I pray a great blessing upon your life. So, Father, I've mentioned no name. Help them. Okay, so, and I'm, this is not like a vow, so I'm not like putting pressure on anybody. It's not like, I vow on my mother's grave that I will give. It's not that. This is just a pledge for February, March, and April, the next three months, over and above, that you could be a part together with this. And I believe, listen to me, before we get on the plane, Amen. everything will be paid for Africa. Yes. Before we leave for London, Everything will be paid, and everything will be paid for every city that we reach in America. And so it is spoken, and the water flows. And the same release will be on everybody. So I want the ushers to come hand out the offering envelopes and do what the Lord tells you to do. There is no pressure here. There's no pressure today. I don't want you under pressure. I just relieved it. I just released you of all pressure because there is no pressure. Just because you feel God holding you in check, and a lot has to do with timing. Everything's timing. It doesn't mean to say you're out of the will of God. You can be in the middle of the will of God. God's still checking you, holding you. Just wait, just wait, just wait a little bit. You know, an airplane goes to the edge of the runway, and the control tower says, hold it because we have an emergency landing and just move yourself onto another runway. Yeah, but I need to take off. We understand, but there's a flight coming in right now on finals. They're already two nautical miles out and you need to move your aircraft in a hurry. They're coming in, they're empty, empty tank. They have to land and, and they're gonna land on your, on your aircraft. Just take your plane, move it immediately. And then you move it, they land, and then you have to wait to be cleared again. And that's all it is. So go ahead, ask God what you have to do, husband and wife, whatever, give your tithe, go to the local church, and then this, put on the I pledge the next three months, over and above, if God will grace me and the water flows in my life, then this is what I'll do. And I believe everything will be done. That's how we did the last time. That's how we did everything in the building. And now suddenly we're striking rocks. What? Hit me again. I'm still conscious. Lord have mercy. So, just do what the Lord tells you to do. Father, multiply the seeds that's sown here today. 
And I mean, you think this is easy. This is embarrassing for me. It, it, uh, <laughs> whatever. Emoji. <laughs> what about the building? <laughs> Pastor Eric, I didn't see you stand there. Hallelujah. I know they've already passed the envelopes out to everybody. So for those watching around the world, do what the Lord is telling you to do many different ways to sow seed. You can go to revival.com, click invest now, revival.com, click invest now. And then also revival.com forward slash giving, revival.com forward slash PayPal. And in the comments, you can put, you know, what you're pledging uh, for the next three months and, you know, obviously give your best gift. And then through your cell phone, you can text 77977 give RMI, a push pay or text message giving. You can do that right through your phone. Cash app is dollar sign revival ministries with an S and it's, it's a blue cash app revival ministries logo. And uh, in your memo, put your first and last name, business name or ministry name. And also there in the memo, you can put, um, you know, do your best gift, but you can even put on pledging over the next three months what you're going to do for Africa and for the road and the, and the meetings. You can do that right through uh, the memo on Cash App. And then obviously you can send a check in uh, to P.O. Box, to Revival Ministries International, P.O. Box 292-888, Tampa, Florida 33687. And you can put a, a note in there, do your best gift, and then I'm pledging over the next three months uh, and put that amount down. And if we missed you with an envelope here, raise your hand. We'll get one to you. And it's then, of pe course, there's people you trying to give in South Africa. We do have an account there. So can you tell somebody who's watching on YouTube to post? Uh, uh, Rachel, if you can arrange that for them to post a South African bank account on, on the YouTube um, of how they can give. So, Pastor Eric. Okay. And then um, with the envelopes, you know, obviously you're writing on your envelope what you're doing today and then what you're going to pledge over the next three months. As you heard the instructions, you'll do that right on your envelope right there. And somebody, Robert, says, I pledged a thousand. What's the end date? It's just over the next three months. And it's not a pressure thing because I'm not going to put you to strike a rock to get a thousand. Like you're going to hit somebody over the head in the back alley. I need a thousand dollars. Pastor said he needs it. I need it now. So, <laughs> but it's really February, March, April, the next three months. Yeah. And we also have the call center open, the prayer and care center right now. You can even call in right there. And um, hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. How many are glad that I talk like this and just tell you like it is? How many are glad like that? How many glad I don't come here with some super spiritual thing, the, the Lord thing? How many glad I just tell you? Okay. Because then, then I know what I'm believing for. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very bottom person. I've got to see what I'm believing for. I've got to know. I've got to see it here, feel it. And then I'm in the moment. I'm a very in the moment person. I can't get excited about what's not in here. I just look and nod. So it'll all happen. I, f I know it now. You know, Pastor Eric will tell you I was waiting for the gift of faith and that came on me. And then the Lord always ends up helping me straighten myself out and uh, get myself headed in the right direction. These are huge things. This is not Massive. like a common thing. What we're doing right here is not a common thing. There's not people doing this stuff every day. Are you with me? And the stuff we're doing is causing major damage to the kingdom of darkness. So. Um, the enemy doesn't like that, and, and uh, we don't like him. So, you're feeling mutual. Amen. But we're going to see it. I, I just got people from England, they're weeping. 
because we're putting the nations, their nation above stuff we're doing here, you know. But God knows what he's doing because we really do. We, we, I started weeping over Africa and over England just this last week talking about it. And the Lord said, what did I tell you? I didn't find myself weeping over the building. I felt myself wanted to beat something over the building, but I was weeping over the nations, you know. So that should have told me right there. You know what I mean? I should be, are we doing this building? <laughs> Nothing. It's like, are we doing this building? I want to hit somebody. <laughs> But the moment I start talking about the vision, then, then, it's, then it's over. I get drunk and whatever. So I'm going to stay in the place of being drunk. Because I don't want to, I don't want to sober up. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. He's, he's so good. He's so good. I'm so glad he... I'm, and you know who helped me? How many want to know who helped me? The Holy Ghost. Amen. The helper helped. Amen. That's why in leadership, don't ever act like you know everything, because you actually don't. Which I told you I don't. But then I'm still secretly trying to do what I don't know. And you can't do it. You have to back off, let the Lord do it. Praise God. Listen, I even felt the burden. Now, let me tell you how far the burden goes. I even felt the, bur the burden. I've got to help that person. I need to bless that person. They need a car. I need to find. I mean, I started doing this for every suggestion. My wife said, listen, you cannot. Yeah, but they need help. God, we need to help those people. So normally the blessings should just flow out. You're helping people and the blessing flow, but not a burden. And you've heard me talk about it. my yoke is easy, my burden's light. I'm thinking, okay, something's wrong with this because I ain't, I ain't in a yoke right now. In other areas of ministry, I'm free. But in this one thing, the moment comes, the building, uh, the building, uh, So think about what the thing that makes you go, that's what you've got to back off of and just ease it up and let God do it. Capiche? Comprende? Pestanula? So bless everyone now, Lord. Multiply these seeds so. Thank you for people faithful with their tithes and their giving and those watching online. All of our online partners, many of them, multiply them, lift every burden, and we'll sleep at night, we'll not worry, we'll wake up in the morning, everything's in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ushers, go ahead and receive the offering, give it a glad heart. and west and every place between come money and multiply to a lovely shade of green good measure press down shaking together running over so i can sow and see to reach the greatest harvest of souls the church has ever seen oh, come money Bring it silver, the gold, and everything. The witness of heaven is gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And the kingdom of God will be flooded with souls such as should believe. It may look like sometimes the Lord is stretching you over the limit. But I want you to listen to what I'm saying, cause this is not a gimmick. 
You've come too far to back off now, and I bring you good news. We are so insane to bring the hearts and souls. There's no way you're gonna lose. Oh. That you won't have room to receive And the kingdom of God will be flying in the souls Such as should believe There's more than enough provision To fulfill my vision I'm on my way to breakthrough When I made this decision I'm gonna so see no matter what Sign of this is right I'm seeking ways that I may give every day and night. Oh, come, money. Come now, money. I hear the flap, flap, flapping of the raven swings, bringing the silver, the gold, and everything. The windows of heaven's going to pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And the kingdom of God will be flooded with souls, such as you. To have the wherewithal to get the jobs done But you're limited to how much you can do If you are short on funds Now I may it with our righteous money Watch me and you'll see I'm not out there looking for money Money's out looking for me The raven swings, bringing in silver, the gold, and everything. The windows of heaven's gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And the kingdom of God will be flooded with souls such as should believe. Of the raven swings, bringing the silver, the gold, and everything. The windows of heaven's gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And the kingdom of God will be flooded with souls such as should believe. Oh, come, money, come now, money. I hear the flap, flap, flap of the raven swings, bringing the silver, the gold, and everything. The windows of heaven's gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And the kingdom of God will be flooded with souls such as should believe. Oh, come, honey. Come now, honey. I hear the flap, flap, flapping of the raven swings, bringing in silver, the gold, and everything. The windows of heaven's gonna pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive. And the kingdom of God will be flooded Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated as the people come back from the ablutions. I'm going to get going. I'm not going to take long here this morning. What we don't finish here this morning will continue. We'll conclude tonight. Tonight's going to be the grand finale. The temperatures do drop down majorly tonight, so we will be inside because I can't, it's hard to speak to frozen people, it's just hard, I know. And if we do have polar bears among us, you can sit outside and we'll be inside. It's just gonna be best that way. How many received the weekly bulletin? Okay, the notes are in there, so I'm gonna skim through some stuff. You can then go and study at your own leisure, but I'm not gonna go through everything, I'm gonna pick out some highlights just to recap and then to add a little bit more of what we were going to talk about today. Now, I encourage you to go to the foundation scriptures that we've been reading from uh, Matthew 17 and verse 1 to 9 about the Mount of Transfiguration. And you'll see that verse 2 
says that Jesus was transfigured before them and his face to shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light. And of course, this goes for the building of the house because Peter said, a Lord is good for us to be here. Let's build three tabernacles <laughs> in the glory. You get ideas to build, you know, and Jesus ignored it. And he didn't make any comment about it because he was building something else. And then look at verse 3 of Mark chapter 9. It says, his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no full on earth can white them. In other words, there was no any outside external fire that could make his garments gleam like it was. In actual fact, one translation says his, his garments look like flashes of lightning. Now, when you find yourself in that, and people told me uh, this week, some people said like a laser hit them. People felt fire hit them. Uh, the colonel said he was a blast of, <laughs> of, a, of a cannon or a, or a tank. Um, but when God touches you, your whole life changes. It's called to be transfigured, which you can see the Greek there, to change form, to change the figure, form, or outward appearance of, to change into another form, to transform literally or figuratively, to transfigure, to change completely the nature or the appearance of a person or thing, to transform outwardly and usually, and usually for the better. Transfigure has a Latin root that says to change the shape of. How many of you know that when God transfigured you, he changed the whole shape of your life? You were going this way and he moved you this way. I mean, I've just been transfigured last night. We were going this way and now we're going to slow things down. And there's no telling what God's going to do now as he does it. And it says here, while its meaning is similar to transform, there's usually an additional sense to make better to be transformed for the better, upgraded, improved, made greater, made more beautiful. You're being made more beautiful in these meetings. Turn, turn to your neighbor and just say, you are being made more beautiful in these meetings. Somebody said that was a little embarrassing to do that at this juncture. But just say thank you. Amen. Especially if you're your wife and Amen. All right. Well, I probably should have reiterated because some people are sitting next to strangers they don't know. People say, oh, my God. I went to the River Church and somebody turned to me and said, you're being made more beautiful. Yeah, but the pastor told them to say that, so don't hold them accountable. <laughs> to transform usually is a very positive and often a very spiritual way to give a new and typical exalted or spiritual appearance to a person or a thing implies a change that exalts or glorifies to become or cause to become more exalted, to elevate or idealize in allusion to Christ's transfiguration. Now, whenever someone is transfigured, there will be witnesses to that transfiguration. First of all, your wife should be able to see it. Your husband should be able to see it. Your children should be able to see it. Your co-workers should be able to see it. So they, in other words, they look at you and go, man, there's something happened to you. I don't know, what, where have you been? What did you do? You look different. Somebody grabbed me and said, people are saying that my whole face has changed since I've been here. They've been FaceTiming home. And the people at home said, what happened to you? What are you doing down there? You look younger. So the Lord touched people. You know, a burden can change the way you look. You drew in, in you know, drawn in, you, you stuck in the realm of your mind, and your whole look, your whole demeanor changes. That's what happened to this dear pastor. She came here. I was so concerned for you when I saw you first, because I knew you were carrying a burden, and I really prayed. I didn't the first day, I kind of did it, and I thought, no, I'm going to get her. I have to. I've got to get her. I can't let her go back like that. And then the Lord did the work. Yes, yes. And you will not be. And I'll check up on you, on you when I come to Peter Marisburg now. <laughs> Amen. So, they're witnesses. Jesus was transfigured 
right in front of them in the presence of Peter, James, and John. They were witnessing his glory, his ministry, his miracles, his transfiguration, his crucifixion, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his glorification. They bore witness so that they could go tell every one of us, as it's even released till this day, after Jesus raised from the dead and after his redeeming work. And what does the Bible say? In the mouths of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Therefore, you can be watching and say, I don't believe that, but we've got witnesses for everyone's transfiguration. There's people that can testify of your life change because you were Escobar, but God transformed your life. Amen. You can testify of the change that's taken place in his life over the years. For every person that's come out of the world that's encountered God, there's people around you that say, I want to tell you right now, I know that person, and they have undergone a transfiguration. There's a, wit- there's a witness. How many can say that you are witness to the transfiguration of somebody that you know because they encountered Jesus? Raise your hand. You are witness to your own transfiguration. So, but now, what, several years? Three years. About three years. Totally a walking alcoholic at a young age. God set him free. Yeah. How many here were a walking bag of anger and God set you free? Who was a walking bag of depression? Who was just a plain mental case? (laughs) Who was a plain loony tunes? Now, there are some people that are, but have never acknowledged anything that I even, but they currently still are, but we're working on them. Anyway, I won't pull them out, but somebody said, No, did he mean me? I didn't mean anybody. They're watching in their homes. They're not here today. (laughs) So the glory of Jesus always carries his presence. Always carries his presence. John 1 and 14 says, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. John bore witness to that glory and transfiguration. That's why he wrote about it. When Jesus was on the earth, he was as much divine as before he left the courts of heaven. I saw that somebody the other day said, Jesus actually came as a man and he only became divine when the heavens opened. I thought, what? That's total heresy. He was God manifest in the flesh. I saw another bishop say the other day that 80% of what Jesus did in his ministry was he was off. Oh no, this is what's being preached from American pulpits today. Yeah, Jesus was wrong. Yeah, I heard it from my ears. Major ministry in America is saying that now. Jesus was out of line. He needed, he, uh... (laughs) listen, we have to pray, folks. There's major problems going on. When Jesus was on the earth, he was as much divine as when he, before he left heaven, as when he was in heaven. But he made himself of no reputation. Listen, to accomplish God's plan, you have to make yourself of no reputation. You have to make yourself of no reputation, especially when the glory of God is going to rest upon you. He took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's why in John, and that's found in Philippians 2, 7, John 17, 5, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So he laid aside his royal robes of deity in that glory that he was on him and took on human flesh, but he was still God in the flesh. It only started when he come up out of the water of the Jordan and the Holy Spirit descend like a dove. But that was just a part of what they saw. They could, if God had put that glory back like that, it would have killed everybody. They could not stand in the presence. And even, you know, what happened to Moses, blind for three days, couldn't even, uh, I mean, saw blind for three days, couldn't see or even eat. Moses on the mount for 40 days came down. They thought he was dead. 
The mount is shaken with lightning and tremblings and earthquakes, and he comes down and his face is shining brighter than the sun. Yet he still struck the rock. Go figure that out. But remember, Moses didn't have the indwelling of the presence of God. Somebody says that makes you worse than Moses because you have the indwelling of the presence. No, it just makes you a human being because you're dealing with your head. And that's the last thing that needs to be totally transformed, which you're going to get a glorified body, and then you will never have a battle between your head and your heart. Amen. So the things you want to do, you don't do. The things you do, you don't want to do. But, and that's the struggle. I'm never going to go there and preach. God says, go there and preach. I'll never ever, mark this down. I will never travel to that place and go preach. God says, go to that place and preach. No! Somebody said, you said you'd never. I know I didn't need it. Please forgive me. That's why you should start thinking about all the things you said you'd never do. You'll never find me going to that country. I'm staying right here. God says, I want you to go to that country. <laughs> why? Because it's out of your comfort zone. It's where you have to go and trust him. So the glory of God was on Jesus before the foundation of the earth. John 17, 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. In eternity, Jesus carries and is covered in the glory of God, and all those who belong him will see him in the triumph of his glory. This is an excellent glory. This is beyond compare. One moment in his glory and your whole life changes. That's why the devil, and I mentioned this last night, wants to pull you out of the cloud to get you in the natural because he can defeat you. Think about this. The Bible says, he who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Somebody said, I want to live like that. Well, Psalm 91 tells you that. Somebody said, where's the secret place? It's secret. Somebody said, but they can hear my voice. Well, he knows you in the area, but he can't find you because you're in a secret place. Hidden. God will hide you. God will hide you. So you see the glory of God manifest at the birth of Jesus. You see it throughout his ministry. You see it at the resurrection when the stone was rolled away. I mean, we can spend hours on this. All were manifestations of the glory of God. The angels sing, joy to the world, light from heaven, all, you know, all of that. And then um, his whole life. And then when he's risen from the dead. And even when they met him after the resurrection, they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? Why? Because it was the glory. They felt the glory. Moses and Elijah. Now, on the Mount of Transfiguration, two people appeared. Moses and Elijah. Moses represented, and he was gone, from, buried for about 1,700 years. Okay, but there he was talking to Jesus. He could not have been resurrected because Jesus had not been crucified and raised from the dead. Jesus, the firstborn from the dead, and the firstfruits of all those who died. Elijah, who was not dead, but he'd been living in, heavenly, in heaven in an earthly body for nearly 1,000 years. And the two of them appeared. Why? Because it confirmed the following. It confirmed the end and the abolition of the law, the fulfillment of the prophecies of the suffering of the Messiah, Christ as the Messiah, and the only media between God and man, that immortality of soul and reality of consciousness of departed spirits and the reality of physical resurrection and then the second coming and eternal rewards and punishments and the reality of the future eternal kingdom. So you had the past, the present, and the future all standing there on that mount of transfiguration would represent the fulfillment of everything. That's why God said, again, this is my beloved son and listen to him. And when you are transfigured, you'll see the whole thing. You'll see the whole thing. You'll have a revelation of what he did for you, what he accomplished for you. You'll see it all. You cannot have an encounter with God and be normal again in, in, in the natural way of a religious person. You just, 
as I said this week, you'll see things others can't see, you'll know things others don't know, and, and you'll be steps ahead of the enemy. So, I'm just talking about me for a moment, not to talk about me, I'm just talking about how the Lord works with me. I have to see it here. Because in the glory you see something. So if somebody said, well, let's do this, I can't see it. Yeah, but I'm showing you here. Yeah, but that's there. I've got to see it here. And that's what will happen in every one of your hearts. You'll see it. You'll see it. If you can see it, you can do it. If you can see it, you can accomplish it. If you can see it, you can do it. Let me tell you right now, because that's how God works. So you go back to what you see, go back to what you know, and go back to what the Lord originally told you to do and stay with that, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Now, let's, let's wrap this up here today, and, and tonight I'm going to continue. I just want to give you the bullet points for the congregation. You can go back and listen to the messages of the week. We, we are transformed and changed. Think of the things that you used to do that you don't do anymore. Think of the things that you were involved in that you're not involved in anymore. The places you used to go, the associations you used to have, the things you used to, in the natural do, that the world does, that actual fact, the desire of that left you. Like if you even thought about maybe just, you know, I'd go down there and eat one of those cookies again, like, like my mother used to make. A little added, some leaves in there. And not that anybody ever partook of those kinds of cookies. I mean, I've talked to people that used to be in the world and that they say God uses them in a mighty way and then suddenly they start doing, they go back to start, I, I have a drink. Why do you do that? Well, I was under pressure. So the devil forces you into that place. No, I'm changed, I'm transformed. Romans 12 and verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the, the transfiguration of your spirit now has to translate into the transformation of your mind. And he said that you may prove what is the good and acceptable will of God. Why would I not be able to prove what the good and acceptable perfect will of God is? Because I won't let my mind know. That's the decision I made. We're going to do it. Those are the deadlines and we stick in with that. And never, ever, ever, ever. I even heard one preacher say, he said, look, you make a decision, stay with it. Even if it's wrong, do not change because people will never follow you as a leader. And I thought, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Because <laughs> what he's inferring is that everybody is stupid. Yeah. People are not stupid. They're actually going to follow you more because they can trust you and say, look, if we're going this way, I know God's going to God's going to turn this thing. This is like a big ship, so it takes a while to turn some things. How many of you know? You can turn a little canoe, you can turn a boat around, but you can have a big aircraft carrier. You can't just turn it around. I've been on the John F. Kennedy offshore. They flew me on in a mail plane. They, they landed me on. They caught me by that whole, what do you call that thing? The, the elastic band, I called it. I landed on there. I was three days on there. I was running up and down. I was all over the place in the officer's mess, talking to the captain, praying for people, the Holy Ghost. 4.6 acres of, well, it's retired now, but 4.6 acres of sovereign U.S. territory. They, they were shooting those planes off. You're lying in your bed at night. Everything's shaking. Whatever. I thought, I said to them, you live like this. Yeah, we live like this. Landings and taking off and... Then you hear a funny noise. What happened? The thing that malfunctioned, you know. Pretty crazy. And then I'm going by stuff and the, the stuff's covered. I said, what's in there? You can't see it. I'd like to. Yeah. You're not authorized. 
But they said we're monitoring every plane in the air around the world at any one time. We know from this plane. I said, from this plane? Every yeah, we know where every aircraft is in the air the moment it takes off and lands. Man, I was standing on this aircraft car. I thought, Lord, have mercy. This is like... And they told me, I can't remember the exact number, but they said this aircraft carrier is the, I think it was the seventh most powerful country in the world in the firepower that it had on. That, that 4.6 miles was the seventh most powerful nation. I said, you're going to be, well, there's 5,000 people. They have their own post box, everything. That's where the mail plane comes in there. It was the most amazing thing to watch. And I came back, I told the whole church back then, I said, let me tell you, you're safe, which I can't say now. You know what I mean? Because of all the stuff they've done to basically remove the power of a nation that once stood tall. Because they, the industrial military complex doesn't just want America, they want all the nations to have all their products. And you can only get all their products if you go to war. So if there's no war, we'll make a war, and then you need our planes, you need our boats, you need this and that and the other thing. But they will not succeed, and they will not accomplish what they want to do. God will prevail because his church is here. We are the restraining force in the earth today. Can you say amen? amen. So don't be worried. Don't fret. God hasn't quit yet. He hasn't left America. I know somebody said, God left America. He couldn't. We, uh, what do you mean God left America? The Lord has left America. He has turned his back. In your dreams. Somebody said, you're going to strike me with a rod? No, an angel needs to strike me <laughs> with, with a rod. So tr have your mind transformed. Somebody said, my mind is being transformed. Again, the scripture we use when we started, third, Second Corinthians 3 and 18, but we all, everybody say we all. We all. Y'all. With open face, beholding the glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory unto glory. So the word transfigured is called changed. The mirror is the word of God. We look in that mirror, we can see we're different. We've been changed. We're constantly being transfigured into his very own image to look more and more like Jesus in ever increasing splendor from one degree, degree of glory to another. We are transfigured from inside out by the activity of the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, I just know that a quick work is being done and you watch between now and the May conference or the summer one or the fall one, every single one of you that have come from the outside. When you get back here, you're gonna be in a different place. And then even for the congregation that have pressed in here this week. Yeah, listen, who, how many would say, Pastor, I went to another level this week in everything and God was doing work in me. Well, get ready because the manifestation of that level is gonna be made manifest. And somebody said, how long is it gonna take? In the next three months, in the next three months. February, March, and April. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And there are going to be many witnesses because of the change and the transfiguration in your life. People are going to be impacted. They'll stop you saying, please tell me what's going on. I know you. What's happened? How come you went through that circumstance that would have crushed a normal person and yet you're still smiling. I don't understand it. What you went through is enough to send anybody to a mental institution. And here you are, happy, and still rejoicing. And you say, because of the hand of the Lord, the hand of God that has carried me and brought me through. And we always give him the glory and we always give him the praise and we always give him the honor. Oh, yeah. And I just want to say this, those of you that have relocated, God sent you down here because you felt you want to be part of this. I've had people grab me and say, Pastor, 
I, I was waiting. I've, some people waited two years to get here. They've just arrived. I've been waiting to come and be a part of the harvest and souls and what God's doing. That you're in the right place at the right time. And you will see his hand and you will see his glory. And you're going to see the fullness of what God has promised to you in your life. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. I want every head bowed, every eye closed right now. Did you get something out of that? Everybody say changed. changed. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I want to give an invitation right now for those that maybe you came here today, a friend brought you, you came because of television, but you've never given your life to Jesus. You never said, Jesus, come be my Lord and Savior. I need to ask you this question because I ask this all the time. What would happen if something took place today, like you went home, put your head on your pillow, in the middle of the night, you passed? I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm just saying what would happen if? What would happen if by tonight, Suddenly, you breathe out your last breath. Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And you don't have to go to devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid, the blood was shed. And just like that old song says, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sin is plunged beneath that flood. Lose all the guilty stain the day, the power of sin, the power of guilt and shame is going to leave your life and you're going to walk from this place transformed, transfigured, and changed, not by the hand of man, but by the hand of the Lord. Jesus is standing with arms wide open. He says, come, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. He calls you. He calls you. Will you surrender to him today? Will you say, Lord, I'm tired of trying to do this in my own strength. I need to surrender my life to you. Maybe you gave your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you allowed the things of the world to come in. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust, the hidden things that clog the heart of man. Or maybe an outward thing now has never just devastated your life and because people know about it because they know about it you feel man well what's the use people know how bad I am it's all is lost it's not lost Jesus is standing with arms right open and he says come unto me all you that labor and heaven laden, I'm going to give you rest take my yoke upon you learn of me my yoke is easy and my burden is light that's what he says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Then maybe in the past four years, you've been through the worst storm or even further back. A sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that shook and rocked your world. But today, today you say, Lord, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Today, I'm surrendering my life afresh to you. Would you do that? And then what? If you were here today and you say, Pastor, I do love Jesus, but I don't have the assurance. I don't know that I know. There's a constant battle with my head and my heart, and the devil's always lying to me, telling me that I'm not saved, but today I want to make saved. I want to make sure I'm saved. If that's you, right where you are, quickly. If you fit into any one of these categories, I want to pray with you and for you. Just go ahead and put your hand up right now and say, pray for me. Raise it up high. Thank you. God bless you. 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 All the way to the back, just raise up. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Just raise it up. Say, yes, that's me. I'm not leaving this place the same way I came. Once you've raised it, you can put it down. Anybody else? Anyone else? Thank you. The Spirit of God is speaking to people. You might never have another opportunity. Today he calls you. Will you respond? You can put your hands down. I want you to look at me now. 
in this, which is the western side of this pavilion. If you didn't raise your hand but want to be included, just put that hand up right now and say, include me. Uh, don't forget me. I want to be included in the prayer that you're praying. Quickly, just slip it up. Thank you over there. Anybody else? Anyone else? You feel your heart beating? That lady? Yes. You feel your heart just racing like this. God's speaking to you. Anybody in the center section right now? Just quickly. Thank you. Thank you, guests. Anybody here in this center section of this pavilion? Just quickly put it up all the way to the back. I'm trying to see ushers. You have to point them out to me. And then over here on the eastern side of the pavilion, just quickly, just put your hand up and say, pray, pray for me. Pray for me. Please include me. Thank you. Thank you. I want everyone that raised your hand to stand to your feet right now. All across the venue, I want you to bring, bring your personal belongings. Come stand right here. We're going to pray together today. And then you that are watching by television, we're going to pray too. Right where you are, you can raise your hand in your house. Somebody said, nobody can see me. Jesus can see you. And today you can surrender. Just come right down here. Everybody that's standing, quickly come. Just come. And... As I pray with them, you can pray with me. You can pray with me, a simple prayer. Today is your day of victory. He calls you. Don't delay. Just come right now. He loves you. He loves you so much. Cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. you in your homes if you just stand right where your television is and we're going to pray together you down here if you look at me we're going to pray one prayer one prayer for us all if you mean busy with God God means busy with you this is not a game we've had the privilege of doing this in 92 countries of the world this is now in my 44th year and everywhere I go I see people that come up to me and say I came in that meeting my whole life changed so I know what's about to take place. If you mean business with God, it's a done deal because God's a very personal God and he cares about you and he loves each and every one of you. So can we buy this? No. Can we earn it? No, it's free, but we have to humble ourselves and come to him and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my sin and I, for I repent of it and I ask you to forgive me. And then he does. He comes and he forgives you. And then you confess Jesus as your Lord. So let's do that together. Just close your eyes. You in your homes, close your eyes. Raise your right hand to heaven. And pray this together with me. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your word, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart God has raised Jesus from the dead, I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now 
Take out the stony heart, put in a heart of flesh. Wash me, cleanse me, change me, fill me, use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me, for shedding your blood for me, that you rose from the dead for me, and you're coming back again for me. And from today, I'm changed. From today, I'm transformed. From today, I'm transfigured. Not because of man, but because of you, Lord Jesus. Thank you right now. I'm saved. Now, I'll just lift those hands. Let me pray over you. Father, I pray that you would seal them by your blood and by your spirit, that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, I pray. I break every bondage, every addiction, everything that tormenting them, every spirit of witchcraft working against their life, it matters not. I break it now and set you free by the power of the blood of Jesus. En el nombre de Jesús. Be totally free from this day. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, use them in a mighty way. Raise them up to be mighty people of God and use them. Use them. Use them. Use them. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at me right now. As a servant of the Most High God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power of the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and, and everything that was accomplished at Calvary, I tell you right now, your sins are forgiven you right now. <laughs> forgiven. Somebody said, like that? Just like that. Forgiven. You forgiven, you forgiven, 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 forgiven. Every one of you. Somebody said, Oh, I can't be forgiven for whatever. You are. Right now. Totally forgiven. I know you stare, but you can never outstare me. <laughs> I've been stared by the best. <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> every one of you. Amen. God's going to use every one of you. Somebody said, but so what I'm going to be, will you witness? And they'll be witness to the transformation in your life. They go, what's happened to you? Say, the Lord touched me and changed me. And they say, I want what, I want what you have. I want what you have. Can you turn and go through this way, Pastor? Shannon and Pastor. Jason are right there. And Pastor Mark. We have a gift we want to put in your hands. You that are watching my way of television, on your screen, there's a, a, a description on the screen I want, of a gift I want to send you. You'll go. She's okay. She's okay. I talked to her already this morning. You'll never be the same again. This is her first time here? Yes. yes. Well, God bless you. Where are you originally from? Um, Punjab, but I was Punjab. born in Uganda. You were born. That's right. You told me Punjab. you were born in Uganda. Yes. From today, God's going to use you in a mighty way. Amen? Yes. yes. We won't hold that against you. It's a joke. It's a joke. She said, I lived in England for 39 years. This is a joke. She was born in India, India Punjab. She went to Kenya, I mean, Uganda. And I was she, born in Uganda. You were born in Uganda. I moved to England. You moved to England? And now in Canada. Now in Canada. So what are you, Punjabi? <laughs> She's Punjabi, Ugandan, Kenyan, Brit. I've said, jolly good show, what, whatever, huh? Okay, God bless you. Amen. See a real mixture there. Amen.
I know everybody thinks people are that, but they're not, you know. She's actually Ugandan, but her family's from Punjab. I tell you what, they're from Punjab. <laughs> but she's from Uganda. And then Britain, and then Canada. She's from Canada, hey? Now, I felt this last night. that there was going to be healing across this field today. I just felt that so strong because that's also another form of transfiguration. If something has been plaguing you, especially sickness or pain that plagues your life, your whole demeanor is taking shape with that. But as we receive communion today, that the power of God will be released and the healing river will flow from this place. And even in your home, you can take communion with us. We, we use grape juice. I know some people use wine, but at the end of the day, the priest is totally skunked under the thing. So we, we use grape juice because it's ritual in, in the church. They have to finish everything left over. And some priests make sure there's a lot left over. And they... So we don't do that. We, we've got grape juice. Somebody said, well, why did you use real wine? Because there are people that are delivered from alcohol. One sip will take them back in. And we're not going to let people stumble at the table of the Lord. Amen. So that's just the way we operate. And then we have a wafer of bread. It's unleavened bread that represents the body of the Lord. So when, go ahead. Don't wait for me. Go ahead and hand out communion. And as we approach the table of the Lord, we come... Now, I know what's happening. The staff are going through the buckets and they find me one with three every Sunday. That's what's happening now. I know now. I have come to a conclusion. There is no reason that I should get three in my communion cup every Sunday. That is a rigged deal here. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's my usher team that are finding, oh, give that to pastor. All right. Thank you, guys. I now have got the plate. Because I was surprised the first Sunday. The second Sunday, I was surprised. Third Sunday, I started questioning it. And now I really know this is a rigged deal. Some of you might get two, the double blessing, three, triple blessing. So, um, amen. Hold it in your hand. I'll wait till everybody gets. I just want to pray over these prayer requests. If you stretch out your hand towards them, let's just pray blessing over them right now. Father, every person that's called, the number on the screen, you know the problems they might be facing within their home. This represents a whole household, a mother, a father, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, a, a child calling out the people that are sick in their body, needing financial breakthrough. Lord, many things that are needed, I pray that you will bless them beyond measure. Give them the miracles that they need. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'll wait till everyone has, but we hold in our hands that which represents the, the body and the blood of Jesus. That by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And by the blood of Jesus, we were cleansed. The stripes he bore on his back covers every sickness and disease ever known to man, and even the new ones they invent. Today, God can heal you from even problems that have been caused by medicine and medical malpractice, which is not a conspiracy. It does happen. Everybody knows that. So I'm believing the Lord to reverse some things for some people here today. Can you say amen? Yeah. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, surely has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did seem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. Matthew 8, 17, that it might be fulfilled, that which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 
1 Peter 2, 24, who his own self bear our sins and his own body in the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live in the righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So, as we link our faith with the table of the Lord and we put the bread in our mouth, I believe the moment that acts, because the children of Israel couldn't leave Egypt till they had the lamb in them and the blood over them. As they put the lamb in them, they were quickened. There was not one sick or feeble one among them. May there not be one sick or feeble one among the river. In Jesus' name, quicken them for the task ahead. So, Father, we take these now and we mix our faith and we receive the bread. Let's take the bread. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Problems in the blood being healed right now. With the low blood, high blood, healed. Blood sugar, low high, cholesterol, normalized in Jesus' name. Your whole circulatory system, your heart's being made normal right now, beating the way that it should beat. I curse every condition that's out of line in the name of Jesus. Body, you function normally. Any growths on your body, any lumps on your body, any things that you don't know what it is, I rebuke it now and command it to leave your body in Jesus' name. Dry up from the roots. I command your lungs to be healed right now. I curse, I curse kidney disease. I curse sugar diabetes in the name of Jesus. Problems with the liver. Problems with the gallbladder. Problems with the thyroid. Problems with the neck and the back and the spine. Problems in the knees and the feet. Problems with your skin. Problems, yes, borodasta in the brain of, of confusion and problems with even remembering thoughts. And, and things that you can't even calculate. I, I pray right now for the, your healing power to flood, hearing to be normalized, eyesight to be normalized, teeth to be healed, mouths to be healed, infections to d disappear from your body. I curse it now in the name of Jesus, in the name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it, and we give you praise. And any incurable situation, anything the doctors have said, we can't help you. Lord, help your people right now. Let the healing flood this field right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I curse sickle cell anemia. I curse any problems in the digestive system any problems in the stomach and the lower intestine, the upper intestine, any problems in the bowels, in Jesus' name, I speak it right now. Father, I even rebuke food allergies that plague so many people today. I curse it in Jesus' name. Lord, not so that we can go eat junk again, but we'll learn to eat healthy and you can help us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Whatever problem in the physical body, we thank you that by the body, the bread that we just took, that you quicken your people. And then one last thing, Lord, I thank you that not one person here is going to die prematurely before their time in Jesus' name. Amen. We proclaim that over you, every single person in this place. And then this cup that represents our freedom that was bought and purchased for us at Calvary. The blood that was shed, the blood that washes us clean as we repent of our sin, it cleanses us from all sin and stain and guilt. All stain and guilt washed away by the blood. Not only does the blood cleanse us, it seals us under the day of redemption. Not only seals us to the day of redemption, but then also protects us from all harm and evil that the enemy cannot touch us because the blood. Every time he looks at us, he sees the blood and he can't do a thing. And I thank you that these are, there's no white or black, red, yellow, whatever color they think everybody is. Every shade in between is one color, the color of the Holy Spirit, the color of the blood 
of Jesus. And we receive this now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and praise 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 him. Yeah, just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Just praise him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now this next week is going to be a week of victory. We're speaking. That's what we're doing right now. This next week is going to be a week of total victory. Between now and next Sunday shall be a week of victory. Monday is going to be a day of increase and blessing. I speak it over here. In the name of Jesus, Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and whatever the enemy was planning for your life this week is canceled, out, removed in Jesus' name. It is nullified in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy was planning over America is broken in Jesus' name. We speak it. We speak it right now. We thank you for it. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Let's do this right now. There's a couple here that part, third year grad, RMI, MA, and they've been members. And I want them to come here. They're going back home to Kingdom Increased Church, Jerseyville, Illinois. Southern Illinois, about 40 minutes from St. Louis. And they're going to go and serve as associate pastors under their senior pastors. And they, this is their last Sunday. They want to be prayed for. Amen. Is this just you by yourself? I thought, I thought it was a couple. Okay, I realized he was single, so I apologize. Maybe I was prophesying. Maybe we just put a wife with you and send off. Huh? Would that be great? You trust me? Okay. No. <laughs> He's like, okay. Huh? Well, oh, there she is. Oh, you. Oh, so you the one in it. Well, then, when is the day? You don't. You haven't proposed yet. You don't know. Let me ask a question. Do you love that girl? Yes. Could you live without her? If you left and never saw again, you'd be happy. Do you love him? If he left and you never saw him again, you'd be happy. Get down here right now. All right. Well, obviously, you're not married. We understand. I'm not doing that right now. I'm not putting pressure on you because I don't want to strike a rock and get into trouble. But I'm going to pray over you nonetheless that God worked that out. But let me pray over you. Thank you for being here. Faithfulness. Five God has come upon you. He's like highly relieved right now. Woo! Thank God. The Lord, the pastor didn't do that. Father, I pray for him that you're going to use him mightily in, in his home church with his pastor and in outreach and evangelism and everything that he does, bless him beyond measure and whatever future arrangements that he has with a certain lady, Lord, that you will work all of that out for him and they shall be happy and they'll live happily ever after. We thank you for let the anointing fall now in Jesus' name, amen. So I'm not putting pressure on you. I'm just praying over you. Thank you, Lord. You're not under any obligation. You're not under any obligation, okay? He's going to have to propose to you. He's going to have to do it properly, and he's going to have to, he's going to, have to drop on one knee. Remember that. And he better bring the ring when he comes, okay? Jesus, Lord bless you. Amen. For a little moment there, 
We were on the edge. <laughs> and I could have done, I could have said by the power invested in me, <laughs> but people, especially the younger generation, they've got these Instagram moments that they want to have. We do this sunset and the ring and the whole proposal and people are taking pictures. Where I come from in Africa, you, you just say, we, here's a ring, you know. We, it's like, yeah, you do. I walked up and said, we're getting married. I didn't wait for nothing. I've got pink lips now. Great. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. It's not bad. Doing it. Yes, pink. People think I've gone, you know, okay, leave that alone. Well, you, have you been blessed? <laughs> have, you, have you been blessed this morning? Yes. Praise God. Now, tonight, tonight's the final. We're going to put the cherry on the top. Don't forget to stop by. There's the uh, King's Arms. We also got the food coming from Studio B and Ladon. And then River Manor Beef is out there. You better, it's almost gone. It's my own cattle stuff you can pick up on the way out today. It's great meat, phenomenal. Yeah, and if you feel to bless him, you're welcome to bless him. I, we have no problem. You're welcome. Come. Put a blessing on the young man. Hey, he's got a lot of work to do. He's got to get a ring. He's got to work out a proposal. He's going to have to fly down and come. If you feel you want to come down, come, folks. The rest of you, we love you. Who's going to be with me tonight? in the spirit, the shouts that will be heard around the world because there's coming another shout. The trump of God. The voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. I believe what we are about to see in the next three years will eclipse everything that we've ever seen. Everything in the kingdom of God is about to be escalated and the power of God is going to flow forth from the church. It shall be shouted from the mountaintops until the whole of America knows that Jesus is alive, that he is real, that he is coming soon. The shout! The shout that will be heard around the world. The shout that will come in your nation. Get ready! 